don't think shit stink pink gators. My Detroit. It's America the BY BY. I think that'll probably suit you, won't it? Yeah, with Clinch and stuff. Yeah. But it's just a ring. Do you really think Embassy's gonna let you in America? <laughs> Do they think they'll let you in your fucking just be like, why is, They'll just be like, why is the blade, the blade coming fucking the in? Yeah, that, that, like, Slimane, why is you, you, you call the blade, you, you can't come in. <laughs> you know. We know where your family's from. Refresh me there, we just said off camera, four weeks out from competition, what's, what's cracking, week, yeah. isn't it? I've got three like, solid week left, and then it'll be fight week, which is just get, pretty much just getting the weight off. You know what fight week's like? You're not actually drilling this into prep, it's more just getting the weight off, so... Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Last session Thursday, travel down to London. Salt bath that Thursday night, weigh in Friday, and just eat. Before we get into sort of some funny stories, I'm sure Ellis is going to yeah, pull some. some old stories <laughs> up just for, for fight fans out there. Just take us back a little bit to your, your career so far, highs, lows. How do you feel it sort of stemmed out and, and, and come to be so far? Are you happy with it? Is there something you want to sort of... There's things I'd w I wish I could change, like... <clears throat> fights I wish I'd not have took because I used to just take fights. Like, I didn't really care. I was just like, yeah, I'll take that. Like, obviously, the, the lowest I've probably ever been from fighting were like when you got, you were there last year when I fought this French guy. Like, we didn't we didn't know much about him. And then after the fight, we found out he was like a multiple-time French champion, world champion. Yeah. And that was probably the lowest I've ever been because that was meant to be like, in my head, my big break kind of thing, O2 Arena. Biggest promotion in Europe, really, for like kickboxing and Muay Thai. And then I just felt like I got screwed over a bit. Like with the weight, with the record of everything, but I was just confident in myself. So I took the fight. I just got punched up. <laughs> How, me being a complete, again, I would say this, neutral to everything and, and not knowing too much about the fight game. Is, is all this stuff on YouTube though? Like, is that not looked at? Because we got told it was his first pro fight that we assumed, and I, cause I couldn't tell what anything was saying. I didn't really look at my opponents on YouTube anyway, because I think, if you look at them too much and they look good, you could be like, oh shit. And like, if I don't look at Instagrams and stuff, because you only post the best bits on Instagram, don't you? So everyone's Instagram's just going to be them either knocking people out or looking great <clears> on the <throat> pad. So I tend to like just not do any of that stuff. But the stuff I did look at, I thought it was amateur. It was quite deceiving as well, his, his stuff on YouTube, because I sat and watched a little bit of it. With it being that Savat thing, it's hard to tell like Different how rules, powerful they are. It just seemed really fast paced, tit for tat. Mm. So obviously we, like the game plan war, just fucking going and have a power in. But I think since then he'd done a proper water cut. So it was quite Next day were a lot quite bigger, big. And he just came in with a different mentality and he just came forward quick, didn't he? And just rushed in, so. He's not lost a fight since then though and he's fought in like Dubai. He's fought all over. He was a good prospect. He was he a, a tough fight, fight for fight him. For him. It was a tough fight for you, that. But well, no one can say I'd, I'd duck fights because first big fight, jumping with someone like that. And that's the kind of momentum I'm trying to carry on that like I will fight anyone. We spoke about it this week, didn't we? That's how your mentality should be. Yeah. Like if you're wanting to be the best and be active, you want to be noticed. You just got to be taking every fight you can really and just yeah. be ready for if something does pop up. Like a lot of fighters and I did it myself, you kind of want to wait till you're 100%. But it's an all year round thing like me and David are talking about this. Dillian White said it, a fighting's a full-time job. You need to be doing it all the time because you never know when a big opportunity will come. And I do think eventually I will get that big opportunity. I just need to keep ticking away and grinding away and stuff. Is the goal to stick with, with K1? I know you've toyed with maybe doing MMA. Where's your head at? It's hard because I've, every Friday now I do MMA sparring at ABT. My striking suits the style of it for MMA, but it's just getting the grappling and the wrestling in. Like I, I enjoy wrestling. Just jiu-jitsu, I can't get my head around it at all. Well, when it goes to the floor, it's just, right, you win, get up. Yeah, it's like two right. feet. I'm done. I'm <laughs> he, wouldn't, he knacked me once and I realised that there's just levels to it. I think we went down to what were it? Ultimate what? Physiques in Castleford. They'd like yeah. create, they'd create Ultimate like, MMA, wasn't it? Yeah, they'd create Ultimate like MMA. a mezzanine. And I were like strong and big at the time and you're thinking to yourself, right, I can I can grapple a little bit. But when... Someone's on top of you and, and stuff. And so it's, it's not just even that. It's just there's a clear skill and understanding of what's going on on the floor. And yeah, because anyone can throw a big right It must have just choked me out about like 12 times. <laughs> and I was like, that's you dead in real life. Yeah, literally. Someone, no one gets them off. He's choked half my mates out before. Yes. Well, I didn't come back after that. I, like, <laughs> I, I, I did I, it to I fucking... I think I stick to bodybuilding for a little bit. That, that first bit, bare knuckle fight he did on, um, what's that show called? It, it was, it, it, bare knuckle FC UK now. It yeah, was before BFBA. It, yeah, it's so on that BFBA. You got a fight on that. And his mate, JJ, he just fucks around all the time, mate. He's fucking well annoying. He's always trying to wrestle you. First time I met him, I was wrestling with him in Black Bulls um, beer garden for about half an hour while one at football games were on. And I just fucking had enough of him. I got put choke on him for Are like... these people fighters? No. No, no. JJ's just, so just annoying. JJ's just, just annoying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, he just... Yeah, I fucking put... 
I put choke on for about five seconds. He tapped. I let go and he just went, doof. <laughs> landed straight onto a bench. Come round about five seconds later, he went, who just fucking rugby tackled me? I went, no, no, I, ch I choked you out. You all right? He went, did you fuck who just hit me? Someone just hit me from it. And I was like, no, no. He just completely disconnected from reality. You were embarrassing that outfit though, trying to check Tom's and hit his hand. No, you yeah. walked back and Jade today going, yeah, Tom, Tom. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> he, he's been fishing for a Zanetti fight, mate. But you'll get it. No. He seems to be doing well in this new platform. They're just all, they've just announced his he's first fight. The guy, fat cunt. Have you, no, no, no. No, he fought a Bro, guy. The, we watched him, didn't we? The guy, have you seen uh, Floyd Mayover sparring with a <coughs> YouTuber? Yeah. For five rounds. That's who he's fighting. Is that him? Yeah, yeah, he looks all right, him. Looks decent. So and he moves quite well. But it's like, I don't know if it's a bit of a mismatch because it's like he's doing an eight man tournament for that kingpin. And I think it will like uh, pick the name out of a hat to who you're fighting. Yeah. And I feel like Tom's got the guy who's probably set out to win it in my eyes. That won't look good, that will it? No, it's not two just losses on back the bounce. Up. Exactly, mate. Exactly. I um, think he's just an entertainer, though. Does he? You, you, you boys will know more than me. Is he going in that to think, right, I want to almost be the best in that YouTube scene? Or is he going in there thinking, right, I'll come in, game, I'll fight. It's only going to benefit sort of my brand. I'm going to be opened up to a bigger audience. It keeps him, not that he's not relevant. You know, I respect what he's done as an hard worker, but it, it keeps you in touch with sort of the younger demographic coming through, so he's more relevant. Like, probably he just enjoys the trading as well. Yeah. Like every, the whole build up, everything about it, he probably just enjoys doing it all, doesn't he? It's either that or he just enjoys getting paid and staying in public eye in it, or like he just said it else. He might like brand. a little bit of a tear up every now and again. If yeah, probably. Well, I've heard he does. <laughs> yeah, he just. I think they pay well as well. So I think that'll play is that a big like misfits part in it. Misfits boxing. It is. He has done misfits, but then this one's like kingpin. I think it's a different, different kind of thing. But they're somehow interlinked because that King Kenny who fought on misfits, he's he's fighting on it as well. So it's all that influencer mm -hmm. type. Yeah, it's none of it's actual like. It's got like Ellie Brook and Ellie Brook's sister fighting on oh, it. Oh, so it's not like actual pro boxing and stuff. No, it's all that. They're, they're not a bad level though. When we went that to watch them, it's some some of them are not a bad level. We've got um, that Ellie Brook. Do you know her? <laughs> Obviously, I know Ellie Brook. My boy does. <laughs> Obviously, you, do you subscribe? I don't subscribe, but I want. FBI, open up! <laughs> <laughs> um, her sister's fighting. I wondered what that was, then I bought some fucking bus. They found me. That Ellie Brooks sister's fighting a girl from Sheffield who does OnlyFans. She's coming on here next week. Is she? Yeah. That Ellie Brooks looks good, though. Me and Josh are oh. filming a scene with her. Looks good, what, on OnlyFans? Oh, what? <laughs> that as well. <laughs> Remember, like, the pads and stuff? Have you seen her on pads and stuff? We watched a fight She looks against... quite good, doesn't she? Who did we No, watch? no, we... we... What, Ellie Brooke? Yeah, we no, watched no. it when, no, when KSI were on the card and she boxed uh, oh, the boxer. We were with Holmesy watching it. We were, filmed, we, we were filming it. I can't remember watching her fight. Me and Holmesy. She's had, like me a little had, uh, bulldog bang, bang. She's yeah. like... She's, she's a, a rig. A rig, yeah. A rig. She's a rig. Sexy rig. <laughs> yeah, I'm tagging Dom in this. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted a shout out, so look, there you go. He yeah. were a little bit... Uh, I tried to put him at ease before... I sat him down and went, listen. I worked stressed. I think, I think you're a little bit concerned of what we're going to get brought up, you know, in case he incriminates himself or, <laughs> or gets told off by his missus. Fair, Did she give you point. a bit of a, a scab warning before? Listen, say this, don't say that. Well, she were like, she thought it were like an OnlyFans podcast. It is. But I mean, just that. You can't walk out of here until you sign up to my OnlyFans. <laughs> until you do a scene. <laughs> well, I think so. she thought it were like purely that. And I was like, if it was purely OnlyFans, why would Holmes be on it? Well, why would Mask you? co-host it as well if it was for no him. i think it's have you not heard about I think we'll tell, <laughs> no 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 i think we'll tell the story a little bit because it is interesting so obviously mm. I'd, I'd set about doing doing mine but for people that don't know there's so much work that goes into it yeah. to produce something you know as i think as a decent standard but just the production value in terms of that it just takes so long and i was sort of playing around with doing mine I don't even remember how you came on my first one. Did you just? <clears throat> well, th this is this is how it came about. So obviously you'd been doing yours way before yeah. we, because because it was in here that we had the conversation about this, right? This was probably six months ago, mm -hmm. I reckon. And my initial idea was to start a podcast and only have OnlyFans people on it. And yeah. I said to Josh because he did it, I was like, "Oh, would you, would you let me out of it? Do a bit." And he was like, "Yeah, come on mine." And like, oh, yeah, I've already got it. set up. Get some practice in and see how it is. So we did a couple there. And then I said to Josh, like, will you will you do it with me? And then he was like, oh, we'll, we'll see how it is. I'll come on, I'll, I'll help you out of it. Yeah. And then just like, we're at last week, obviously. It was my missus that brought it up. Now. My missus was just like, listen, you, you're busy with your business. Yeah. You obviously want to pursue podcasting and, 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 and get that out farm down. But I would just like, she went, why don't you just partner up with Ellis on his? I was saying, is it just you two now going forward? You're yeah. Not, not I, think, I, think that's, I, I think no, it's, yeah. it's yeah. going to just be this moving forward. It, he's obviously built a good skill set with editing it. We, I think we bounce off each other and two heads on something's always going to be yeah, exactly one. and obviously like i said the initial idea what to just do only fans people and then 
collab with them after and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then obviously it, it works getting like local sportsmen and yeah, like exactly. people who've got a good story as well. But obviously I'm still going to get a couple of OnlyFans people in there because it's, it's like my thing really. That's it's what, what you're I doing, do, yeah. so. But I think she thought it was just that. And I was like, well, Tiffin doesn't know OnlyFans. Holmes didn't know OnlyFans so you can chill out. Yeah, my <laughs> missus never pulls me up on anything. Like she's always supportive and gets behind it. Apart from when you dress like a pikey on pod. Well, I get a bit of flack for just <laughs> yeah. been, been a scruff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I always wear Jim King stuff, which I've had since it's I've been, been like dying fucking 19. to get a Jim King sponsor, mate. <laughs> I'm just pushing it. how many it. emails he's sent over. Um, like him and everything. everything. Mate, yeah. But she's been giving a bit of flack. But um, what was I saying that I'm fucking completely ugly off? You're saying up. that she never gives you any shit? No, but uh, we've we've just put the podcast on audio only. Ah, so yeah, people yeah. can listen to like Spotify, uh, iTunes. It's audio only. That's on way to grow though, isn't it? So we want to push that. Like but that. yesterday I shared the fully game uh, s- Spotify to my feed. And the caption reads, I got my girl on OnlyFans. And obviously my family's on there. Ah. So so she just, I, 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 I didn't <laughs> connect the dots, mate. I just you share stuff. Know, and, you, yeah. and she went, it, <laughs> she went, it does look like you're getting me on OnlyFans. I was just like, right, I'll take that a little bit. Uh, I'll, I get that, I'll take yeah. that on board. Because <laughs> it was like something about bed sheets as well. She's like, fucking hell, like you bummed me to I think I saw like, that one. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was my story. <laughs> Apologies. Would you, is, would, you, would, would you actually let your bed do it or not? Do OnlyFans? Mm-hmm. Well, she t- you like to do feet and all that. Feet? You know, just people are into that. Bro. Well, yeah, I think on OnlyFans, I'm going to guess Ellis can speak about this more than me, but I don't think it's just a case of getting uh, polaxed on the... No. On, on, yeah, I everyone's got the weird kinks, uh, aren't they? Yeah, whether it be tights, feet, I don't know. Can, yeah. I don't know what your kinks. We'll find out when camera goes though. Why is your porn up search just disgusting? You don't want to look. <laughs> 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 I need it. I need it. I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <not allowed. laughs> I'm not allowed to watch porn. <laughs> Porn's not religion. good anyway, and is it? There's religion, a big, yeah. there's a big thing. We're like anti-porn now, though, isn't it? I don't think it's, I don't think it can be that good for you. How, how often would you say you watch porn a week? That's daily. He's thinking about it too long. <laughs> yeah, he was tallying up uh, how many times. A week. Couple. I've got to tell him times an hour. <laughs> a couple of times, I'd say. Not, times not too much. I'm too tired. A couple of me. times a day. <laughs> An hour. No, seriously, a couple of times a day. No, we, 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 yeah, we yeah. Yes, I think that's a fairly. That's fair. I, I, I've, I've proper cut it down. Me, I'll only ever like watch it now if I'm taking pictures of or, or like doing content for OnlyFans, and I'm just struggling to get motivated for it. I'll just stick a bit on then to help me out. What power wank then? Two <laughs> photos. Mate, I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> right, now I'm in the game. In, in the last three months or so, I haven't like masturbated for pleasure. Yeah. I've just done it for business, like for business. <laughs> I just, well, think, why, I just think, why waste a wank when I can make money out of Who it? Who were we speaking to about and the like f- sort of frowned upon it? When I were younger, you know the saying, don't go out of a loaded gun. Well, that's sort of a philosophy you stood by. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Slim won't get that. So not going I'm out... I'm old enough to get that. Because when, when Slim were a kid, going out of a loaded gun actually meant in tune, is it? Going out of a loaded gun to protect yourself. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. We have to, we have to. No, but I mean... So Aaron, don't forget your loaded gun. <laughs> my, <laughs> my rugby captain were just like, listen... This, this is the game plan. You you going out? You don't go out with a load of gun. Like clean the clean yeah, the tank before you go out. Yeah, but then some boys have been like, this. <laughs> some boys were just like, no, why would you do some that? Some struggles. Oh, oh yeah, you do, don't you? Struggle three you, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just angle that third round in you. <laughs> so if you didn't have that wank before, you might have had that two third round in you. I'm good to go. Just no two third round. But no third round. Three yeah. rounds too excessive anyway. If we're going to start talking, about it, it, is, it wants but, to do it three but that also says that you're not doing the job right the first time or the second. <laughs> And you can't be asked even like just doing fingers or out third. Oh, I can't, man. Man. I had things to do, places to be. No, you didn't. You just couldn't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> some of, some of the Bring me, you'll be able to, you boys will be able to tell some stories here. How did you two become mates? Obviously, fruit fighting. I know you you always say that he uh, was sort of stalking you at gym a little bit. Yeah, he sort was. Of like just... Similar. Um, was that, that last question? Was Ellie sort of, obviously, I were older than Ellis and knew of him through rugby and, and the story and, and all that. You being younger than Ellis, what was sort of the the reputation he had, the the feeling that he had? What what did you actually tell the truth? What did you yeah. think about him if you didn't really know him as a friend? Well, out blowing smoke up his ass, but obviously everyone used to say how hard he was and that. P- pretty much everyone said you were a cunt. Yeah. Oh, but the, no, not in like a, a dicker, but they're always like yeah, he used to go out and fate all the time. So when then you're I, like, I, I want to do that. I, I, I do that. So. <laughs> And then when I started getting pally with him, obviously I think at first my friend, you know this, my friends were a bit sceptical. They were like, what, what's he like? Yeah. But then obviously once I got to know him and stuff, like he's a prick. But he's like, uh, arguing that. He's a what does man. it make you think now when boys were like that? Like even <sighs> sort of uh, nervous to what he's like and does that affect you? Are you, are you bothered by that? 
to be honest, I didn't even realize people were like that until I like started knocking about with Slim, and then he was saying like, "Oh, um, where did, did I pull into Asda or somewhere like that?" And you beeped at me. And yeah, yeah. So when he, I don't know how old you must have been, but it was like not long after we'd first spoke to, he was probably like sixteen or something like that. Mm -hmm. And how, however many, how, are you right now, fifteen. And, and then I'm, that would about a year and a half. And I, and I went by and beeped him, and his mates must have said like, "Off, oh, like how do you know?" It? And then a couple of years later, Slim were like, "Oh, um, yeah, my mate said like, oh, how do you know him? He's fucking a bit of a dickhead." And I'm like. Is that actually what people think? But because no, nobody, nobody, nobody ever said, man of fact. yeah, yeah, no, nobody ever said that to me though. Really, I kind of knew when I was a kid, I was a bit of a dickhead when I used to be on parks. I was not, I won't say a bully, but I, had, I, I knocked about with all older people who used to give me shit when I was growing up. So then when I got a bit older and I started knocking about with like people a bit younger than me, I just replicated it. Really, I didn't really see it wrong in it. I did, but I just thought, fuck it, I'm having my fun what now. Are you get, used to though, get me on back, yeah, I suppose from partying and going out local and stuff like that when when people are pissed up or whatever they come over and go oh, like, everyone you think you're a dick and, like, and then i just started getting it more often than not then and i just realized and as for i'm not bothered it don't bother me whatsoever but at least i'm like not proving them right and proving them wrong really so I'm, i don't i couldn't really give a shit now and i'm sure people's opinions have changed now anyway so what do you see for slamane in terms of his his combat career what, what route do you think he should take what what should he do is he moving in the right direction <clears throat> what do you think to be honest, like since I've since before Christmas, I haven't really I haven't, I haven't really been at loop. I've, I've, I've stopped training at Sweatbox. So I'm not sure, like apart from what I see on social media, what's going down at the moment. But I like I think definitely stick to K1. It's you could you could you could stick to bare knuckle and do like money fights, like what, what we just spoke about then off camera for different organisations, and and it's not a bad bag, is it? No, it's, no. Let's be honest, it pays better than K1 most of the time. Yeah, it does definitely, especially if you get quite far in it yeah and like they don't even rely on you to pay tickets big organizations they'll just say come in and fight we'll give you what 5k and it's uh, you'd like fucking oh what five five two minute rounds yeah. no problem Easy, that, that I'm but k1 i think it's your bread and butter and you just you just yeah need to like stick on my it. style is pure k1 it was a bit of a it was a bit sad to see after you took that defeat at o2 against uh the french kid i saw how like how much you got disheartened by it and how much it knocked your confidence yeah, it and did. For Even, like a week or two after, you were like saying, oh, I, just, I don't know if it's for me to do. And you've obviously seen that it, you can come back from them sort of losses anyway. And that's what that's what makes you a better fighter. So definitely stick to it. And just like I said, then how many fights have you had last year? Six last year. So that's so pretty active, active yeah. anyway. That's pretty active. But yeah, if I were, I'd, I'd be ramping it up now because age is against you. Yeah. You know what I mean? All these young lads are coming through. You just want to ramp it up. Take as many. I know you, you, you want to have a full eight week camp leading up to a fight. But if a fight pops up in three weeks and you're fit and ready, why not take, take it? it? Yeah. What's, a lot, what's of, the worst a lot of fight shows now are putting contracts in though that you can't fight five weeks before. So my in my mindset is get the big fight done, keep training, then if something else comes up then. But I, I knew I know I couldn't do like MTGP, BKB, mm -hmm. combat fights is because all all three of them have like contracts that you can't fight five weeks before. So it's like in my head what I need to do is big show, little show, big show, little show kind of thing so I can just keep going. So I just want to get rounds under me but a stoppage is good on that but i think at this point i need rounds what else i think you should do is like now and you, you i know this is how your mindset will be you'll be thinking right i'll take this next five got in april have you got have you already got another five bucks straight after that or bkb in june hopefully right but no more k1 no so then what i'd be i'd be thinking of a plan right i want to fight i'd be looking at dates fill your diary up and, I'd, and then i'd get into promoters i say right after this fight that i've got with you in april i want one in fucking whatever your next show is get me matched against that whether i win or lose i just want to keep i've got it. some for the end of the year it's just because i've got my pti course coming up mm. so that's kind of taking 10 week just out of my year so you're not you, you can't do you get weekends off and shit with weekends that? off but no the, time to fully the train bkb the fight the camp will pretty much be if i can do out in the evenings and then the weekends. Let's be honest. I think the BKB three rounds, three two minute rounds of just throwing hands. I think you're, you you can walk around ready five for that. Three though, because it's it's the BKB BYB oh, show. Is it BYB. That's a bit different. So I need I need I need to speak to them, get every, all the information about it. But I think it will be that. And as bad as it sounds, I think depending on the opponent as well. If you look at someone and you think I can get you out of there, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I'm not going to say it, Ray. I, I hope I get a fucking fight. I just walk, walk over. But when you look at them and if you think, I, I could. Yeah, sometimes you know it's going to be a bit, you, like, sometimes yeah, you can you tell. Like, oh, is that why it's a little bastard. bit, is it a little bit dangerous there then? So if you look at like your organisations like BKB where, or BKFC where there's, there seems to be, it's, it's a growing sport, you're going to be attracting more talent and more fighters. Is it sometimes hard to, if it's not a named opponent who you know, is, is there always a bit of a risk there of 
what's this guy about? Is he is he an anvil in that sort of in that BKB? Once you get to that pro level, yeah, because everyone who fights has had like an amateur career. So like when you have your amateur debut, realistically they can be shit because they might not have done it before. But when you get to that pro level, even if it's the first pro fight, they're going to be good mm. or at least decent because they'll have had that amateur career. Not many people just think, apart from Diffin, just think oh, I'm going to be a pro fighter and just go straight in. Well, a good and example they, is that lad who we jumped in and cornered, that Jordan. That Jordan Tompkins, yeah. Because he... We were sat in crowd watching. watching who, yeah. who, who, who were we there to watch? Tiffin. Tiffin and yes. Holmes. Oh yeah, so we'd gone there to watch that. We were sat on the top tier at O2. This kid walks out with a, with a fucking wife beater vest on, no corner men, no crowd apart from a guy that was sat in front of us going, Way, I, I work with him, I work with him. And I'm like, fucking hell, he's, he's sold one ticket, he's brought no corner men. Did you have a water bottle out? Fuck all, mate. We had to go. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. So, so, so we're like, should we jump and help him? And he goes, yeah, fuck it. So we ran down and said, Jim, sh should we corner him? And he went, yeah, jump up here. So we cornered him and he just fucking put... Um, Paul Hills. Put Paul Hills and out he came in the first last, round. last minute as well. Some, yeah, yeah, he yeah, did. He this is what in. I'm saying. Some of these people might just be built for be like that bare knuckles. He is. He went to uh, America and fought on BYB yeah, and just got put away this. done that as well. The same, pretty much the same thing. Just walked in, punched him up, walked out. Mm-hmm. I'm sure with time frame here we can discuss this. Um, I know you boys probably won't know too much about Johnny Graham's boxing career, but it's just been, well, he, he told me yesterday, uh, fighting Will Cairns at BKFC Leeds. That's who I fought him. What, yeah, BKFC I think you both have fought Will. What What sort of threat does he offer there? Like, what advice would you give to Graham there? He's one of them, Will, that you can't switch off of him. He can put anyone away, especially in bare knuckle. He's got a lot of stoppage wins. I don't think Johnny has out to worry about. Obviously, he's a boxed amateur, box pro. <clears throat> He's a good boxer, isn't he? But Will's is one of them that, given that, given the right moment, he can put anyone away. It was shown with the Liam Wilson fight that he, he gave him a lot. Yeah, of Yeah, he went. I didn't think uh, Liam's good, but that fight made me think, is is he that good? Because Will took it to him. Well, all you've got to look at it is Will's fucking very experienced. He's a journeyman, obviously. So he fights week in week out, sometimes four or five times a week. Mm. And he said in that interview, didn't he? When I've, I've not got, well, is that what he said? I said I've not yeah, got long left. So the mindset that he seems to have now is, I'm going to give it all me all this last year. It's been last yeah. year of boxing, and he, and he looked lean, and he looked like he'd, he, he took, took it a little bit more, more serious. serious. Yeah. You could see that in his demeanour and his physique. Well, I've got him on Facebook. He says that he's actually like training for fights now. But like, obviously, I'm going to back Johnny. I don't. I've, I've seen that he's been boxing from a young age, and he does pad. I've seen him do pads, and so I've never actually seen him prep for a fight. I know he meant to do that gloved fight uh, in four ounce gloves on Scott Show, wasn't he? But apart from that, I've not actually seen him in action. So I'm going to say, well, we're training with him tomorrow, aren't we, Johnny? Yeah, so we'll, we'll get a good feel look. for it tomorrow. Um, is it sometimes, you boys can speak on this as fighters, is it sometimes an advantage to be given a fight in six weeks to cram it, or is that a bit of a no-no? I think sometimes, yeah, because it, say if you know for a fight, like say if you know you've got a fight in three months, that's three months of maybe overthinking. Or as if you get told, oh, I've got you a fight. You just be focused on getting fit, getting shot. Yeah, you're just like, ready. right, I need to get ready. I feel like David does that a lot and I kind of like it. I walk in the gym not knowing about a fight and I'll be like, oh, I've got you a fight. And it's like, right, Sam, let's ramp it up that little bit extra now. Yeah. Like this fight, that's what he did. I was, I was at Dom's, it was around Christmas and he just texted me saying, I've got a fight. 72 I, I prefer them fights where a promoter messages you two weeks before or a week before and like... You've got a few of them. Though. We both have to yeah, be fair, yeah, don't yeah. Is that why I, it's I important that. to be ready, like you said? Like we were saying, it's, an, it's a full-time job is fighting because yeah. you never know when those opportunities will come up. Even when, even when I want ready, I'd, I'd say, yeah, and I'd take it if it were a decent bit of cash and the opponent didn't look too dangerous, but it, it showed in that <laughs> Have fight. you told that story? No, I haven't actually. I, I touched on it a little bit when I took a fight short notice uh, when I was in Ireland partying and the, the guy texted me early hours of Sunday morning, like, do you want to fight next Saturday? Um, it's this guy's last fight. Um, he's just He just goes out looking for knockout, 84 kilo uh, title fight. It was big though, one. Five, five rounds, do you want to do it? So I checked him out, big Jew said, and I thought, fuck it, he's obviously just going to come for knockout. I'm not fit, I'm fucking partying. It's in six days, let's just do it. So... It were over in York. Me, a couple of boys went over. Joe all were there, Ty. basically in corner, but not <laughs> meant to be in corner. What sort of advice is Joe all giving you in corner? No more, Bro, no more abuse. This, this Just is, abuse it opposition. Yeah. This, this yeah. is perfect because I've got the full video on my phone and you can hear some of the stuff that Joe's shouting on it, so I'm popping it up on the screen right, right well, now. Just give me one example. <laughs> I'll give you one. We don't get tired in this house. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then proceeded to get a towel. Yeah, as, as I was fully gassed at back end of round three, couldn't even stand up, right? So, <laughs> oh, well, well, that, though, <laughs> yeah. so this guy was geared out at Gills, and to be honest, I was teeing off on him for three rounds. I think I knocked him down. More than that, it wasn't it last round? No, no, it was. You knocked him down every round leading up to the last. It was end at third round, I think, and I still had two rounds Is left to fight, right? and I just didn't have it in the bag. It's the one that we've put an intro where I ate him and he fucking is level. I couldn't, I couldn't even stand up. I was that tired. I just took a load of every, every leg kicks. I wasn't checking any of his kicks. And then uh, he won. They got his hands raised. We had to fuck off because we were all kicking off in crowd after. And then two weeks later, he were like calling me out on Facebook and fucking giving it, saying, oh, here's my number. We'll fucking meet up on the street and all that sort of shit. Didn't really rise to it. Day later, looked on his Facebook, rest in peace. So Basically, I don't, I don't know if it was Ellis with that. Oh, Ellis, Ellis, Ellis with that bitter about losing. I just, he went and killed him. When, when I saw him put on Facebook, I totally blacked out. Wow. I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> that full twenty-four hours. <laughs> now I'm joking. It was no, not, did he die? He died. He died, mate, he died. Yeah, yeah. So rematch is not. You were asking but, for a rematch, and then like like I said, a day or something later, mate. That was a he- If if I'm just going off when I read it, and that that was a heavy shot he took. Bro, don't be dumb. Bro, I'm just... I'm bro, fucking, we were no, saying bro. this to you, bro, though. Bro, that's a big no, shot. Thinking, that's a bi- when you were knocking him down, it, you were landing clean shots and he were literally sprawling on the floor, getting back up. I know. Like they were, and if he's juiced out his head as well, I don't want to point the finger at Oh, him, stop it. <laughs> now, listen, mate, you... you- you know what you're going into. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why you, you got you, the sign you, like let, the, let, the let clear this up. Going. Going. I, I, I don't think it was to do with me. I think, <laughs> I think, I don't know. If the police are watching, it was to do with Ellis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Let's change angles a little bit. Uh, to talk about your your army career. How did, what made you decide to go do that? Is, are you gonna? Is that gonna be something you do for a while? Are you thinking of a way out? What's the story? Yeah. So obviously from start. Tunisia, the, the make you join army. army at 12, is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, well, I'm just lamenting, this is your life, tell us. Well, it. it's not the army, it's ISIS, you've heard of, <laughs> you've heard of ISIS, I'm sure you're, you all at home have heard of ISIS. <laughs> I, I always wanted to be in the army, my cousin's an officer in the army, mm-hmm. so I just kind of always wanted to do it. I was always like, no, I'll do it, I'll do it, and then I went, right, I'm going to go for it. From school, I applied for the Marines, and then I, I injured my hand, and then if you get injured, they push things back, don't they? Mm. But I didn't really want to do it anyway. So when it kept getting pushed back, I was like, oh no, no, what, what a shame. And eventually I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And then I just thought, no, army. And I went for army. I were in training in COVID. We couldn't go home. So it was like, my first three months, it was basically like I on tour anyway. Couldn't, couldn't go home for three months, couldn't see anyone. We had to just stay at the camp. And then did basic training. Got an award for being the fittest recruit. I just thought I'd get that in. And then got to battalion. And then about half a year of actual soldiering I did in battalion. And then they were like, oh, you do fighting, don't you? And they kind of just let me do my own thing. That's because you're walking about in your walkout t-shirts daily. <laughs> With my belt on me, you know? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> With hand wrapped. <laughs> With shadow boxes in everyone. <laughs> and then um, they just started sporting it. Like the, the highest rank in the battalion, he were like, oh, you're that fighter guy, aren't you? And I were like, oh, yes, sir. And he were like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to give you full sport and stuff. But then my regiment has left. So I've come to a new regiment now. And they're kind of like honouring what the Lanks did for me which is good. So I'm just ticking over. Like I say, I'm off at the minute because I'm in camp. I'll be back pretty much as soon as my fight's what, So they just let you off pretty much for the full length of the camp? The last five weeks. But you can't complain. No other job really no, it's, is going to set to me. Very supportive. I have five weeks off. And like some people could see it as you're just getting to go home for five weeks. Obviously it's not that. Cause I am probably doing more than I do when I'm at work anyway, training twice a day and stuff. Like I said, no job, no like civvy job would set to me. Right, our five weeks paid off and just could train. Oh, it's outstanding, that, mate, But yeah. the army is good for that, but my sport's not recognised. You have to be recognised. Like, if I was a boxer, I'd be left full-time, just train all the time, but because my sport's not recognised, I don't get that. So it's kind of like, I get my camp off, but then I'm back. Obviously, in an ideal world, I could just keep training because that's how that's what pro athletes do, it? They'll have the fight and then back training. I can't really do it. I have to train around Liverpool and stuff like that. Do you have a, a timeline for when you want to call it a day? Do you want to progress through the, the ranks there? What's the goal? I was meant to promote last year, and then I came off the promotion course for that fight in June. I was meant to have you both there when you were on steroids. Oh, yeah. So, like, that were really bitter for me. It's only four, 400 quid extra a month when you promote me. And I were like, I gave that opportunity up for this fight, and then he's took steroids and messed yeah. the whole opportunity up for me. So, like... It were, a, it were proper, like, a double double kill. 
because I'd just come off that loss as well. So I was like, I need to get back in and have a win. And then he pulls out, won't pull out, he's on steroids, so we can't fight. I lose my, my course place and it's like, what am I doing here? Back to what you just said at the start of that story that um, you you joined like COVID times and you were stuck in uh, stuck in camp. Like obviously, I in military. I know what it gets like in there when you just based in with a load of bull. Get like, gay. Gets gay. Does it, does it does it get a bit? Sheepish? I don't, I don't <laughs> want to know any of the gay stories. But <laughs> if you got any mad stories that you can tell us from then, everyone were just fighting. Yeah, all the time. Because by everyone, do you mean you and everyone else? Yeah, me. me I had vendettas against. It. I did. I had. <laughs> Four well, in, fights in, in fighting, or I mean the squad is going out and fighting? No, we weren't allowed to leave. Just in your room? Just amongst each other. Like, and like, is that, bring that back so I understand, is that just a pecking order thing, or are you just bored and want to fight? I think it will cause, as well, you, most people join the army are joining because they think they're like a bit of something, don't they? And then there's 30, 40 lads all crammed into one living space, and you, everyone's wanting to prove, like, no, I'm the... Go, 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 go. Is that what's going on? Uh, 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 <laughs> whoever could suck dick the fastest. <laughs> and it were like, at first it weren't bad, but a month and a half in, you're not seeing anyone, not seeing your family. You're knackered all the time. It did just bubble up a lot. And I have a, I have a temper best of times. So people there were just getting under my skin a lot. And I never got in trouble for it though, because the court pools used to like direct me onto the people they didn't like. <laughs> So like Kill were, him. But basically <laughs> what? One of my cop used to go, you like my little pit bull? Because like, there was a guy from Manchester and they all hated him. And then he threatened to slice me up. And I was like, I'm not having that. So I'll give him a bit of slap. What, salami? But the best one was obviously, it was against a para recruit. Because the paras, obviously they hate all of us. Yeah, tell us what happened with that. I remember that story. They hate all the Paras basically hate everyone that's not a para. And because it was COVID, it was like a one-way system. You had to leave one way and come out the other way. So we've all come out. And then these lads are like, these parallels are like, no, you're not getting through. And I'm like, well, we are. It's a one-way system. And they were like, no, you're not. And I'm like, we've got to. We've just been told we have to. And then we walked off. And then paras call us crap hats. It means something like horrendous attitude towards soldiering or something. That's what they call us. And they were walking off. They went, fucking crap hat. And then my mate was a little shit stare, a little scouser. He goes, Slim, are you going to let him talk to you like that? <laughs> yeah, just plant the seed. Yeah, and I was like, why would they call me? He went, call me a crap hat. I turned around, went, you just call me a crap hat. And I went, yeah, I went, say it again. And he said it again. And I just put him out. And then his corporal ran out. And I was like, fuck's sake, here we go. And he didn't kick off at us for fighting. Looked at his ladder and went, did you just get banged by a crap hat? And he was like, yes, corporal. And he was like, we do not get banged by hats. Go for it. So he, he called you and you didn't do fuck all about it, then? Is that what you're saying? My corporal will come out at that point. <laughs> but then them two started My corporal's out of the New York corporal. <laughs> That's literally what it gets like, though, because they were squaring up and I was like, what have I caused here? But then they were asking for, like, my name, number and stuff. They wanted, Basically, they wanted to report me because I'd beaten one of their lads up because they were ashamed. And then I knew a lad in their training team. And on PT, like, this lad were getting apparently smashed, like, not even, like, in a funny way, like, ah, you've been banned kind of thing. They were genuinely, like, punishing Rinting him. him for being a pussy. Yeah, for, be for getting beaten up by a hat. Mm -hmm. Sending him up the hill, sending him back down. Sending well, him there you've got me looking at just... If he's going to say that to you, he's he got to back yeah, it up and stuff. It, don't say it if you think he's going to... But they all do think they're the like the top dogs in in, in the military. They to do. be honest, though, you don't expect when you're on a training base. Obviously, I, I, I did basic training at Raleigh. Like, it's probably not as intense as Army because it's just... Army's a big dick swinging thing. Yeah, yeah. Navy's a bit different, but um, you probably don't expect to fucking call somebody something and then tee off on you, to mm. be honest. But I suppose they're like, try and take yourself back there. Not that it would be probably similar to going to jail, but are you going there with the mindset, right, I'm embarking on this army career, anyone says anything to me, I'm fucking, I'm holding my own and that's that. that. Did you go in with that mindset? Yeah, I, I said to my mates before, I was like, I'm gonna, I said to you, I was like, I'm going to end up fighting when I'm there because I'm not going to, just because the environment I'm in, I'm not going to back down to any situation. And it was that thing of everyone thinks they're like the top dog. And it is embarrassing when you, when, now I'm a bit older and I'm not in that situation anymore. It's a bit embarrassing, but at the time you think, no, if anyone, any one of these mugs try and like start something, you're going to give it to them, aren't you? You know, I found out when I joined Navy, obviously I'd, I'd just won a British title in MMA week before I went. And when I got there, like everyone just, all, all Navy lads just seemed to be pussies. Um, but some of them were smart. And when it come to like arguing or banter and stuff, because I'm just a fucking donut from cast, they'd mug, <laughs> they'd mug me off like in front of birds by saying stuff to me and me and I'd be like, not have a, a word to say back. So I just end up being like, fucking say that again and I'll knock you out. And <laughs> just having that attitude. 
so my basic training is 10 weeks and I just had that attitude all the way through. I never, I never got into any fist fights for anybody, but I just had that attitude where if people were trying to make me look a cunt in front of like You're people sure? there, I'd just, I'd just tell them. But then I ended up in my last week getting tucked at commander's office and he was like, oh, it's your, it's your last chance. You can't be fucking doing all this. And you do it again, you're getting booted out. So it never actually came to blows, but I think I can see how it could easily get carried away with army lads. Cause like when we were, like with Marines and all that lot, they've got a different mentality to what to what Navy had. You ended up clashing with them when you went out on nights out. I don't know why they all just fucking ate each other. It's because in the militaries. sense, like, you're in, if you're the infantry, you're the ones that are meant to do the fighting, aren't you? Mm. So it's kind of that mentality of we're going to fight everything. And the, they're not the, I'm not saying we're dumb, but infantry lads, we're not the smartest. Not many smart people think, oh, I'm going to... I joined the, I didn't join the army because I was thick. I actually wanted to do it. Mm. But you don't see a smart person think, right, I'm going to join the infantry. And if they do, they usually join as an officer. They never usually like one of the lads and stuff. So most people there either can actually fight or just think they can fight. So piggybacking off that then, if, you, if you're attracting trained fighters to, to infantry, what are they teaching you when you're actually there? If, if, if they need to breed quality skilled soldiers, what martial arts are they teaching you? I'm open when I'm, once I'm a PTI, I can change this in my regiment a bit because the PTI is just run it. It's called combat PT, but it's like half these guys have never fought. And it's like, what do they actually know? Like when I were in training, I were like, what, what is this? Like this in, I mean, I'm thinking you wouldn't do that. And my corporal, because he boxed for the lanks, he would always like, just keep, just keep your mouth shut. Just do it, get it done with. But I was like, that wouldn't work though. And they're like, yeah, I know, but just don't say anything. But in your head, it's like, I'm not going to do that. It's not going to work. Yeah. But you've got to do it just because they're a lot of the military in it. It's, we do it because we tell you to do it. Were there any birds in your, like, there were, there were one in the, obviously there were, there's loads of blocks at Catrick. She was round the corner from us and she went at rifles and, and she, she was nice. Like. She nice. Like, what, <laughs> out of 10, what we're talking? Well, we always said there's army fit and an actual fit. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm yeah, about to get She's a nine in the in the sort of environment. In the army, she were a 10 out of 10. Oh, like, whenever wow. she walked into and what about, stuff, what, what, what about without, without the military? You see I'd, on the street? I'd say about seven. Because that was, like, my regiment to say that I joined up with, say, there were 40 of us. How long did you base it? 10 weeks? Basics, 11. Right, so, and then do you have, like, a different entry join every week or two? Every two weeks, I think. Yeah, so yeah. so when me and my entry all walked on, we had like 15 girls in ours out of 40 people, which is very rare. So you had all like lads that were a bit further on in training, shouting stuff out window at them all. That what? Just like fresh meat. Oh, wow. Come on, and, all that, and all that shit. Right, yeah. You're cool, but yeah. <laughs> Mainly me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, when, when you're two weeks into it and you see all fresh meat. You think you're dog's fucking, after like two weeks when you've been there. Out of window and that. <laughs> and, uh, we're we doing like what you're doing before, like windmilling. Yeah, what, like. get on camera as well. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's getting clipped. <laughs> that's the intro. But I'm going to put a little shrimp uh, emoji <laughs> over it. <laughs> the girls that we in our, um, in our joining group, out, out, outside, like, civil world, they're fucking probably four or fives out of ten. But when you're there, mate, especially after three or four weeks, and you couldn't fucking... I don't know, it's, you probably were all wanking all over each other and that, but <laughs> with, with our lads, no, nobody wanked for, like, first three or four weeks because you couldn't, you couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't, like, get any privacy. It was and a then, toilet. You could, but then people were over, over top taking photos of you. <laughs> and shit. Everyone just carried on in it. <laughs> just getting off on it. I've got nah. about four videos of different lads wanking on my. Phone. This is what I'm saying. Very, very strange. Yeah. <laughs> this, we'll, this is we'll, why we'll, we'll work on it. Mate. We'll work on it. <laughs> but this is why we didn't do it. And then after a little while, mate, these fucking birds that were like fours out of tens, big, big one to like look like me look looking like nine out of ten. <laughs> and I'll tell you a story about. Um, like week seven, you go into Dartmoor and you do your two or three days, um, like in bivvies and shit like that, and navigating. And the weather were pretty shit. So the, they normally make you do a bivy, like an open-ended tent. They took us to like a spot where it was like a roofed, uh, it was just like a brick wall with a little roof over it. So we were buzzing. Boys sleep at one side, girls sleep at the other side. We get in I bed. We get in bed, mate. It's like eight weeks in. I'm not going to say what her name was, but we were all laid there. It all went quiet. And the, the chiefs or whatever were like, right, I don't want to hear a fucking word out of you. Like, get to bed. You have two people on guard at all time. You rotate every hour. They went, they went inside this little bungalow. So everyone's there, mate. It's quiet as fuck. And I'm like, let's just say this girl's name's Emily. Seems that's my girlfriend's name. She's probably going to cry watching this before. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Emily. And bear in mind, there's 40 of us in. She goes, yeah, come and get over here. <laughs> so she's like, what? And I went, come and get next to me. And everyone's pissing themselves. I'm just like flirting with her. She was like laughing and that. And then I thought, oh, fuck it, whatever. Laid on my side. Then I just felt someone kick me foot. I looked and she's like, move over then. And I'm like, oh, there oh, we go. Nice <laughs> one. Come on. We've obviously got a sleeping bag on. So she's laying next to me. So I'm like, 
Right then, so I turn onto my side and I'm like <laughs> spooning her. On the little scoosh. So then I like sh sh swiggle her sleeping bag so her zips at back and I'm like swiggling mine to the front. Both do unzippy, get in spooning position, teed off for a good minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then did the business all over like the mat in between us, grabbed the jacket from behind me, wiped it up, oh, chucked it back ooh. on whoever's bag it was. Oh, fuck. Got up next day. <laughs> got up next day. She'd, she'd gone. She must, I must have fell asleep. She's fucked off back to her side. Everyone's getting dressed next day, but I looked at the side and oh. one of them just putting his uh, just jack jacket it. on and there's just like spider webs all over the back of it. And then we just took piss out of him all day then. <laughs> See, if an hour on exercise, I did it like that. that. I made some major life decisions as everyone were a bloke. Yeah. So well, no, you've no, got to no, do what you do, <laughs> Dave, scoot over here. Come here, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, big check. Come on, watch with me, pal. <laughs> uh, you boys off camera were saying there's a story about Magaloves, aren't they? Where were you? Oh, oh. That's a bad one, that. you got to tell that though. Come on. You know, Matty, you know Matty Clark? Uh, is he training Matty Clark now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's yeah, what I always up with there. He came on holiday. We all went on holiday. And then, I don't know, it's like as soon as we got there, he just changed. He was just a violent... Mate, he's a nightmare, to be honest, him. He's a nice he kid. Drink, he's a nice kid. And as soon as he get, as soon as the switch goes in his brain, he's he just angry. fucking changes. But I think he's probably changed now, but that's yeah, now he's got a bird in a kid yeah, and yeah. that. But then we'd been on the strip about an hour and everyone come and taps me and they're like, Slim Clerk's getting arrested. And I'm like, oh, fuck's sake. So I go out and then I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? I'm trying to talk the police down. And then this bouncer must have thought I was dark and he just comes and goes, bang, and it's me. And he was a big guy. So I. Why, why did the bouncer do that? Because he thought he was saying I was kicking off. He probably was partially. I, you probably I were. probably would have been, yeah. yeah. Would In my head, I was being calm and I was like, yeah, yeah. stop it, stop it. But I'll probably shout. I was calm. I don't need two people. So I'm like <laughs> trying to stop it there, really. And then I had to, I had to do it bouncer. It made me feel good because you know, how, how big he was in that. And then I got grabbed from behind and I thought it were just another bouncer or just someone else getting involved. So I turned around and hit them. Copper. And it was a copper and I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh God, here we go. And then all the police just swarmed me, batoning me and stuff. And all my mates, they kind of just stood there. What can they do? Back from Southern walks over. Mate, Corey Southern, big rugby player. Just puts his drink down, runs over and goes whack straight in. What, says, police? Yeah, just runs in like, caution to the wind, just runs in, bang. He starts getting teed off on as well. And we all get arrested for a good few hours. They just batter the life out of us. And like, it's annoying because Clerk got away with it most. Clerk didn't really get it. He caused it and he got fucking away unscathed most. Me and Southern got absolutely levered. I, I had a bleed on my brain. I had to go to hospital. You knew about it because like as we do now, we message pretty much all the time. And then I just stopped messaging, didn't I? Like, for like a day and a half, just stopped messaging. Then he's messaging like my mate saying, like, where the fuck is he and that? And they're like, oh, he's been arrested. So then uh, they eventually give us his phones back and they're like, Ray, you've got caught on this day, can't leave the country. We're trying to get a flight for me back, aren't we? I'm just trying to get home. Then I'd have stayed personally. I, this is what I was saying to him. I was saying, just stay, mate. You've got, just behave yourself. You've got a couple more days. There's no point fucking about. It took us passports anyway. Yeah, you're it's, a bit of a panicker though, aren't you? What, what, the what, what the took your passports? So how did you get home? We had to go to court. It's not, no, the reason I wanted to leave the country is because we had to go to court. Because I was like, fuck that. What, you were thinking maybe just, where were you here? Back, back, on, yeah. back on the boat. What, you were thinking, get to mainland <laughs> Europe and just get home? I was going to fly back to England. Yeah, how can you fly without a passport? No, that's what I mean. That's what, before they took it, that was my plan. But like, the reason I was panicking so much is because they were basically going to me. They were like, you're getting done. Because the bouncer I had to go to hospital. So they were like, I got they were saying, you're getting up a GBH against him, assault against a police officer. And then when we were getting beaten up by the police, they uncuffed me and went, let's have it then. Like me being the idiot that I am. Went and started trying to have it with them. So then they were getting done for that again. So they were like, they were saying to Southern and Clerk, you two probably going to get the embassy came down, the British embassy. You two probably all right. They were like, you. Back to June is here. They were like, you're going back home. <laughs> so I would, obviously I would have been nervous. I was like, oh shit. They're getting them out of it. And they pretty much told me there's a high chance you're going to go to prison. Yeah, because I feel you're probably missing little bits of that story. I feel like the beginning bit when he's punched you for no reason, probably were a justification for like, come on, let's be honest. I probably were being a bit more... Aggressive than I thought. Yeah, I no, love you were punching people. <laughs> Pretty much. <yeah. laughs> well, well, this Malia, did you say? That, that Malia, the second time that that all coming onto that because then we got to we went to the court, got away with it, but they were like, "You're on a two year suspended sentence. To go home. Don't come back for this amount of time. We, we could come back two years from the date." Mm. So when we went Malia, that was like a week after the date. From two years ago in Zante. I'm back. I was like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> Let's have it. But some up must have flashed up because every time, like when we went through the thing, they were like, what did you do last time you were in Greece? Like, you know, the people, what, whatever the fuck. Passport call. control. Yeah, they were like, what did you do last time you were in Greece? And I was like, so I was a bit on edge about that. And then full old is going fine. 
and then Tyler loses his head and starts booting off and then I'm trying to lads leave it for ages and ages I'm like just leave it leave it leave it and then these lads just won't leave it like they wanted it so I was like we'll have it then so we had it and then I've hit him but it's one of them his, head is, his head's at curb as you know a lot of time and that's the worrying thing because he's gone fucking, don't no, put, no, don't don't why have you just incriminated him just because you made him say the same oh you hit someone in the head at curb like fucking he's notorious I, forgot I know you're a fucker for it Ellis <laughs> you've killed time. someone no I haven't oh yeah I forgot about you've that oh. a bad, that's a bad allegation to make on, on live on TV live, yeah. it? <laughs> and then um, so we've had this big fight and then we get back to the hotel and then I go to our lads right go to your room no one turn the lights on them dickheads walk straight out onto the balcony and they're like, all these Greeks are like, they're there, they're there, they're there. So then all these quad bikes start rocking up and like all these lads get out and then we're like, we're going to we have to go down. Is this a scene out of a film? I swear to God, it's <laughs> mad, mate. And we're like, we have to go down. I'm like, JJ, get up. We need to go fight. And he was like, JJ, we're there. Oh, so, so, I, so I understand they'd come on the quads to, have, to settle it, to sort yeah, it out. Yeah, to have another, to right. have another do, basically. So we're like, right, we've got to go down and fight him. There's only like five of us. Then JJ's like pretending to be asleep and we're like, JJ, wake up. And he's like, what, 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 I can't <laughs> That JJ's the one I just said I choked talk out. Me through, talk me through. So those quads are outside. I like to dig into these stories a bit more. Who's the ringleader there? Is it you? Are you saying, boys, fucking get your fucking, come on downstairs? I was like, right, we're going to have to go. Yeah, but so what's what's mood in camp like? Is morale high? We're thinking we can, we can, Every, we can. Based on. Was, was he not here? At least one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I'm you had a couple of boys like that, you'd be like, come on, boys. If boy, I had all the mates work. that were like game for it, yeah. I'd, have been, I'd have probably been all right. But there were me, his cousin Callum, Callum were game for it. He were fucking up for it. I've got a funny story about what he did as well. He were, there were Tyler. Tyler were pretty game. Jono were just like, right, let's fucking do it. And then there's JJ that were like putting his socks on, right, slowly. We're like, I'll meet, you, a warm up, I'll meet you down <laughs> there and stuff. It's that moment I've you've got... I've got to mobilise my hips. <laughs> <laughs> it's that moment you've got to pull a fucking motivational speech out of bag, I reckon. Get them all in a room. Like right, some brave, aren't they? Here it is. We've been waiting for this moment all his life. <laughs> but then we've gone down and they're like, like, there's me there, I look behind them. They're like, leader. Them look behind them. <laughs> and they're not lads behind. And then the straight away <laughs> crowd. It's like gangs of New York. Yeah, right? yeah. Like... Gangs of Malia. <laughs> but then the straight away went, the one you ate, he's in hospital. And I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. That's one less Well, get your on. redemption. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, fuck. And they were like, we've we'll rang the police on you. Oh, and yeah. then the hotel owner were like, go into us, don't worry. I won't let the police come get you. But then we were like, what the fuck? Didn't you, didn't you fucking flurry? Did you escape? <laughs> we left the country. Because... Pussy, mate. No, I've mate, already got just, a criminal record in the yeah. country for all that stuff. I don't I've, think it's a case of being a pussy there. I think it's a case of... I was being smart. Like the, wanna, I'd have just relocated hotels. Yeah, I've just moved hotels. Or just an Airbnb or something. Where mm. not no, but it's, when you're not... I was already done in that country. And like the lad of it, they're saying that he's in hospital and stuff. I know you never know what to believe. I'd so, have called the bluff me. So I, I only had two days left and me and Tyler were like... So it was me and Tyler that were mainly fighting. So I was just like, I was like, I'm, I was like you lot can stay, I'm going. I've just my ban for this country has just ended, and I've just done that. I'm not risking it. Well, you just get book a flight. Yes, yeah, I just went home. It's curse, Malia, mate. That's yeah, why. That's where no, Brainy got stabbed. It's, it's Greece. It's jinx for you, that. It's, it's Greece not for nice me. Place. I'm just not off back to Greece ever again. Like Dom's saying, I'll come to Greece, and I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> might, might be different with Bird, but mm. that's but if they let you in. That's what I mean. I'm worried that imagine if he, he did die, and then this summer. Well, you'd be serving time, mate. You, you, yeah, exactly. Imagine if someone get to the country and they're like, oh, you. Because it'd flag up straight away. Ah, uh, it's probably not dead. He's I reckon, probably I reckon not. they'd have found you by now. And I think it's of me Don't sometimes lose sleep. because once something like that's happened, you're on adrenaline and high alert. It's an old school play to say I'm not saying he wasn't hurt, but it's a play on fear that you've hurt him mm. because it, it it puts you in a completely different mindset than thinking. You're thinking, should I get out of country? And, and yeah. it's like, it, it I knew, knew if I'd have stayed, I wouldn't have enjoyed mm. my time. It's fear of, of like, I've ru- you, you, they've ruined yeah. you older, really. Yeah. They're like, the, the incident has, has done it, but they're saying this has happened. It's, yeah. I never liked that. Because realistically, it, it was more the repercussions that would have happened to me if he was or if he was seriously hurt. And like, I wouldn't have, those last two nights, I would, I'd have just been sat there thinking, so I wouldn't have enjoyed myself. So I just, I just came home, yeah. But in my head, and now I still think it was a smart decision. Because we could have kicked off again. It was, they were, like, you went, my late, were fighting. Everyone just caused his fight. Rife with it, mate. All the time. I just think, I could have stayed, gone out the next night. Was Mally the one with zigzags and that there? What, a night like a nightclub zigzags? Or? Oh, is it? I don't know. I don't recognise the name. Just one big strip and then it yeah. ended, it just, te- it just tees off. off. Yeah, yeah. But it were like the Wild West, mate. 
Yeah. It would just Mate, there's a fucking, every night. There's an MMA ring on the strip where people can just get... I don't know if... Were they there? Were they one, there? Uh, the Mate, when I went, there was just an MMA ring like halfway up the strip and anyone could just come and fight. It's like Thailand with that thing. That they, had, they had in... In Zante, they had that. Every once a week, they had like a boxing ring and anyone... If you, you had to tell them your experience, if you fought before... They'd find someone else who'd fought. So he'd be telling him his bare knuckle. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, no, I'd be telling him. Oh, I've had a couple of boxing matches. I've been there, but I've never fought before. That's no. exactly what I'd do. I'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm owing free. Like, just don't put anyone big in. Another, I'm pretty shit. Another dog act. <laughs> <laughs> you're just a scumbag. And you wonder why you've killed someone. You've killed someone as well. <laughs> Even keel there. Talk me through uh, another subject matter. How long have you been with the bird now? Since about April. Has that been good for you? Has it slowed you down, made you a bit more focused? Yeah, like I work. And she won't even mind me saying this, like I had a bit of a, a wrong one before. Oh, come on, keep telling me. <laughs> <telling. laughs> yeah. I was just like going out and being a dick, wasn't I? Because <laughs> I can't even concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> I keep thinking where these sounds come <laughs> from as well. <laughs> But I would just. Like, I want wait. I want. I want somebody to fucking like Mike. Just, I want someone to stick that mate. No, when I start I'd, playing that, I want I'd be able to, to stick to that. I'm gonna get. Just I'm gonna get you. Try and stick. Just please, just try and stick to the story while it's playing. Like, go from. I will give you some context. Go from the inception of me in her to how she's changed your life and like. So do you want me to talk about one of the, how I met her? Yeah, not like shagging her and that. No, just, the way the way I met her. Yeah, yeah. So I went in fiber. There were me, JJ, Scott McHugh, <laughs> and then um they were sat near us. And then we kept, she kept like nudging me by a mistake, trying to turn the heater on. Yeah, by a mistake. By a mistake. And I would turn around and went, are you trying to sit on my fucking knee or something? And then from there, we just started talking. And then we all went out on the Sunday. And then that guy is just, <laughs> that music just it's thrown, hard, it? it's thrown me off. <laughs> it's not that serious. Come on then, so fell in, fell, in love in, <laughs> fell in love in five. What happened then? Love at first sight. Love nice. at first sight. And then um, at the bank holiday, we all went out. And she went out again then. So we started chatting, but then, so then I messaged her and she's like, oh yeah, I live in London. And I'm like, fucking London, why? And like she goes, you in there, she's like performing arts and stuff like that. So she's at the university, uh, Dang or something like that, singing, dancing, all that stuff. So I was like, oh, is this even gonna work? But then we just kept messaging and then I actually drove down to see her and I got 300 pound in fines. Cause obviously in London, they've got all the yeah, different the, taxis yeah. and stuff like, I was driving down one of the streets, I got fined there 10 seconds later, I got fined again. And I was like, well, she'd cost me 300 quid. I may as well stay with her. So who did you mug to pay so, that? Because so you're just... <laughs> no, no, hold on. We've got a bit. So his justification for the commitment was, well, I've invested 300 pounds in fines. Therefore, I must commit to <laughs> it. it now. We must get married. I'm all in. I'm all yeah, in. that's me committed. I'm all in. <laughs> I was going to say, how did you pay for that? Because Josh is probably the tightest man I know in your second. So I know how much that would have broke you. I've never known Slamane get his wallet out. No, I haven't. Ever. I haven't. And this is no... <laughs> if I, I'm not owes even me lying. money. I don't know what for, but he owes me some sort of repayment for I'll something. I'll pay it back in friendship. Okay. <laughs> I asked Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I went, Mark, can we, can we go halves? Yeah. And we went halves. Even half, I was like, fuck. You must have given Mark some sort of repayment, no. He's yeah. probably going to see this. So. That's fine. He knows what's happened. <laughs> I, was, I owe Mark a dig, to be fair. Who's this? Fuck, Matt, he's fucking... My uh, stepdad. Stepdad in Mugby. Boy, mug me off. But um, at one of my fights, Mark's got a blind spot. Mm, he and, will have. He'll have two when I see it. <laughs> and Ellis was stood in his blind spot and he's going around all my mates, like, checking out. Oh, good to see you, good to see you. I just mugged him off. I'll, he, I'll paint the picture for you, right? He knows Ellis probably one of the most as well. That's what makes it funny. I'll, I'll paint the picture. So we stood at Combat Challenge. I'm cornering Slim. I fucking brought him through, warmed him up, everything. He always goes, oh, go and, go and meet my mum and Mark and just, like, settle him in because I know all my mates are here, so... There's eight of us stood in a row. I'm sober, like nice and polite. Seven other lads are all fucking smashed. Like, oh yeah, all right, yeah, all right. He walks over. I thought he'd see me first. So I like went for a little bit of, nope, nope, didn't see me. So I bailed on Anshek. Got man next to me and I thought he's taking piss here. So I'm like, <laughs> then he goes around everybody else. And I'm like, and then he just fucking don't look at me and just talks to everyone else. I'm like, is he fucking taking piss here? I didn't say it to him. I went back in change. I went, mate, does fucking Mark not like me? And he's like, well, what, what do you mean he, he likes you? And I'm like, he just come over to everyone there. I fucking went to stick my hand out. He ignored me, shook my hand next to me, everyone else, and then just blanked me. And then I don't know what you must have said to Mark, but he came up to me like a bit after and he was like, I apologise, I didn't see you. I've gone blind in one eye. And I'm like, you're fucking too right. But it's just yeah, but like job. there, you should have said to him, Mark, you're right. Like, just... just I, but I still kind of thought you were taking piss. All right. It's one of them situations where you've been like... And then I left it too, and then I left it too long then. I left it too long. It, it does overthink them situations. <laughs> I do. He's I'm a, a bit of a panicker. I'm panicking. 
but it's, it's, the, the, the reason we found it so funny is because you are probably the one that Michael speaks at most. Oh, I did like to think so. So the fact that he's ignored you just straight up and spoke to a bunch of pissed up people he doesn't even really know just made it even funnier. I'll, just, I'll just get him back and shag him with me. I'm not really. Oh. Oh. He had to go there, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. I did shag your cousin though. So yeah, that you <laughs> yeah, that's very low. But I, you're, you're laughing. I'll just pop a picture up on screen and then we'll see who's laughing at that. I'll just show. I'll... Which picture are we talking about? Oh. Well, it's not, not any just any, any photo. Oh, really. okay. Just a nasty one. Slim. Look. I shag enough. laces. Simple as that. He's a, he's a lacy shagger. <laughs> Me. You, Callum, you know. We're on the uh, our man. We got anything we, else we want to talk about? I think we've got some more stories to pull uh, out. Yeah, rip them in, boys. What stories? Oh yeah, I tell you what, I did want to bring up, and I've just uh, I did forget. Big fellas, Pontefract, sort of the Ponty Tavern fraternity. How <laughs> the Ponty Tavern warrior? How established are you in that sort of pecking order? With respect, and are you proud of it? Compare it to like the Cray twins of. Oh like, well, I you're higher than that. Yeah, if, if okay. me and the Crays walked into Ponty. It People should come to me. And though. where are you? Where are you frequenting when you go to Ponty? What's your spots? I know what they're going to be probably. It'll be easier for you to just tell us <laughs> your basic night because it's pretty much the same night every time. Unless we go elsewhere, it's... which you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go out anymore. But um, we'll usually start on Cass. It used to be what was the pub at top? We got shut down. It's where me, you, Jacob, don't, don't, and Joe don't drag me into these nights. So I'm what not. What were they called? It. Which one? Commercial. No. In in Cast Town. The top where Joe all was Jacob and all that used to go. Oh, the Rock. The Rock. That's oh, rock. the Rock. That's rock. Also, that's Glass Hour, yeah. mate. That's we, not Cass. Come that's on. That's not need to get yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. where it used to usually start, and then we'd work his way down, and then usually head to Ponty. See, it's changed now, actually. There's a nice part of Ponty now, Roper Gate. It's good. Is I, it? I told you this with last bank and that, mate. There's some we, nice we, bars we need there to go. So usually we go to Roper Gate now, and then we'll see what Tavern's like. But the standard night out used to literally get pissed in Cass. Straight to Tavern, stay there for a bit, and then... I don't go biggies, I go silks. Would you class yourself as a celebrity at Tavern? No. How, how, off off how, camera, though. How close are you to celebrity status there? I only have to sign a few titties and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> not, not loads, a few. It, Does anyone go like, it's, it's Aaron, it's, man? No, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but like... People like people come up to me and go, oh, let's get a picture and that. And Fuck off, oh, right, mate. I I'm walking ever selfie. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, let's get a picture. Not like, oh, you are in Slane, can we get a picture? They'll be like, we'll just be chatting. They're like, oh, let's get a picture. Let's... You know what it's like when you're fucked up and everyone's like, let's get a picture. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, sound. I'm Someone... not buying that. No, I sort of see it. I think nah, he is. Nah, I think honest, he is. I not, in the same, not in the way you're probably taking life. People don't go, oh, my God, that's Aaron Slane. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. does that, but they'll come up. And I know why they're doing it. They'll let you ask thinking, Ray, we're mates if it kicks off. Yeah, it'll back us up now. Just because they ask for what, a picture. What, just like you're going to just random us to go for a stranger? Yeah, that's what, yeah, but in round here, that's what they all think like, isn't it? <sighs> we were talking about this last week or week before, and I was on about myself. Being a young lad, like probably 16, 17, going out with all older lads, getting like dragged into fights a little bit, you get a bit of a taste for it. And I openly said the reason that I used to like going, like not like it, but the reason I used to go out and fight war, because people around you be like, Oh fucking! Hell. You don't fuck with him. He were fucking banging all these out last week, and you just get used to that routine. And it's not that you go out looking for a fight, but if it pops up, you take it, don't you? Yeah, like I weren't. I won't complain if it happened. I won't mm. be like, oh, this is ruined my night. I'd kind of be like, that's ruined my night a little bit better. I like to say like when people bring it up, I'm like, oh no, I, I avoid fights now. Like I avoid it. Like and I, I haven't been out in months, but I never, I never avoid it. To be honest, you need to learn to though now, mate. This is almost like too much to lose, and I think when once you come to a certain level, to me, it's I've never been a fighter like you boys, but I've been in trouble with police and from fighting. It's it were I were always fully aware when I was sober of the consequences of it, not the actual See, fight. I don't till the next day. I, I would no during it. I, I probably not you just in the moment yeah. and doing what you're doing, but I were always very aware of there's some serious consequences if this goes wrong here for me. But and more so now as you're a little bit older because you, you've got jobs, you've got responsibilities, yeah, you've got you girlfriends. Yeah, you that stuff, you, you? It becomes a thing there is... Like, I, I, I'll ask you a question and just honestly answer this now. So, do you think you could ever get... Because you're proud, proud men, you're, fight, you, you're fighting men, you've done yeah. it all your life. Would it be difficult in any situation that even if you knew you could smash someone up and they were, they'd, they were putting it on your toes to a degree or doing something that annoyed you... Do you think you'll ever come to a point where you can just laugh and walk away? Truthfully, I don't think I would know. Because if someone's trying to fight you, in my head, it No, ought. so if there's, it, there's, to me, there's a difference between if they're squaring up to you and you boys 
you know how to fight. You're going to probably have a good read on, I think this person's going to do this, so I'm going to take care of this before it gets to the situation. I always situation. think I'll hit you before you hit me. And if my situation has always been when I've had a fight. If yeah, but I, what, what, so what I just can't wrap my head around now. If especially, someone's coming up to me, is this, gonna, but, but in Ponty, why are people just trying it on with you? Why are people, if well, they know I, you are, why are they putting it on your toes? I don't really get that. I haven't had that problem in, in Ponty for a while now. It's more like when, when, I, go when, I, when yeah. we go elsewhere. But it's mainly my mates. And you'll have found that when you when you were going out on it. Yeah, said, but then I always think this is a valid point to this, that if you've got Ellis, Lacey and Aaron Slomain in your friendship group, are your friends almost thinking to themselves, I'm fucking... Yeah, I've got these I, two. I've, got, these, I've yeah. got these two boys here and... You know, I've always said that. I do think. I do think a lot of people do think that. Sometimes that, that's yeah. a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. Like when we we went out in Leeds, um, in Fiverr. No, before that we went out in Mission. Oh yeah. And there was this big ice hockey player. I'm mates with him now. I see him at barbers all the time. I bump into him. It's a bit awkward at first, but we're all right with each other now. We talked it out exactly that <laughs> every time. And we're walking through uh, Mission nightclub, and some this this guy is with two of his mates pulled Slims. Like we went to walk past, and they were stood on a bigger level, and they pulled this thing here. Is that so I seen that walking? pulled what he like pulled his top like pulled slim back just being a just being a dickhead like tr trying it on. So I'm walking behind. I'm like, oh, what, what's going on? And he's like, just fucking pulled me top like stretch me top. And I'm like, what did you do that for? And he's like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. So then like I knew he'd done it, but I, didn't, I wasn't going to start it. So I just I said, oh, we'll settle here then. So we we settled like in front of them. They were on a step that were like probably that height, and it steps up again. So they're dancing on that. We're below them here, just like hanging about. See, so you're playing chess here, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Well, me, yeah. you, Jacob, and that. They were a good. They were a good gang of us. Well, probably five or six of us, which didn't. It didn't need that many, but like we weren't walking off and leaving it. So then we're we're dancing away, and this this big kid, I'm closest to him, is like waving his arms about and bumping into me. And so I turned around and went, "What are you doing?" And he were like, "You what?" I went, "What are you doing?" He went, "No, nope, mate." So I went, "All right." Turned around again. And he did it again. I went, "What the fuck are you doing?" So he went, "Listen, mate." Uh, if you're, I'm ready to go whenever you're ready to go. He said that to you. He said that to me. I heard him perfectly clear at first time. So I went, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> now I, I went, I'm like, huh? And then as he went to say it again, I whacked him. He fell and I don't know if he snapped his leg then, but he ended he up with a broken he leg. And he, I think he fell off the step, broke his leg. And then his mate come forward and I hit his mate as well. And then we, we it can just it, it, it turned into a bit of a group on group. It, yeah, and then, and then we left it at that. So it's kind of good like that when you've got friends in your group yeah. like that because you don't have to, if it had been, a smaller number of you or people that you know that's around you that wouldn't have your back like that you'd have probably fucking sh gone into your shell and fucked off and felt like shit for being a pussy for the rest of your night but then there's also si other situations where you need it kind of don't you yeah but then there's also other situations where you know that them sort of things don't need to be kicking off but then some of your mates will have bikes at big like I in a beef for when I did season and there were a good gang of us like all those Josh Strange um, a lad called Reese who did Thai boxing and all all do it, like would could handle, handle could handle the self yeah and we're at a, we're at a, um, a pool party at a B for rocks and all this big bunch of like half cast like southern lads are all juiced up with Rolexes on and you could just tell the order like alpha boys and it was just like a bit of a clash and Reese they were on his skinny just didn't back down to anybody mate and he were there arguing there were probably a few more of them than the waddles they were a bit bigger than us we were doing Caesar mates so we've been partying and we were fucking run down it was back end as well they were probably on holiday so all juiced up fresh. And they're arguing like that, and Reese is, and he's like going, "Oh, you fucking bitch!" To Reese, and Reese, is, Reese goes like this: "He's like, fucking smash you with elbows and all that <laughs> in, in his face." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't really fancy this one." I'm like, "I don't fancy, I don't fancy the chances." What, so here, is, is what he's just gone and then sort of showing him it, strikes. So, so Re it, it started right because Reese was stood in front of him with his missus, and they were like budging into him. So he stood turned around in front of his missus, and we've all noticed it. We've all kind of got ready for it to kick off, and he's saying stuff, and Reese is like just showing him, like going, "Yeah, I'll fucking smash." It. But, but the, the lad's face in, and he's like putting, <laughs> putting his arm elbow next to his head and all that shit. And I'm like, all right, it's about to kick off. And then next minute, we ended up like calming it down. Um, and then it, 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 it started again a little bit more and they were like threatening to fucking stab us and all that lot. So we just left it. Day after, I went to the uh, other side of a beef to go get food with the, the bird I was seeing then. And I fucking walked in, mate. They're all sat there. I think I went, oh, fuck. So I'm like, here, we're, we're eating outside and the bird's paranoid. Going, Why are you in there? Like, who have you been talking to? And then I'm like, no, trust me, get the fuck outside. We're eating outside. Got we're not eating in there. And then she's there looking. So when we sat down, I'm like, them fucking eight lads in there, them big guys, that's who we were arguing with the other day. So I'm not going in there. I'm not fucking cheating on you. Like, that's that's how it goes down. So, yeah, anyway, to defer diff, 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 back to that story, like, it's good if you've got it like we had it then in mission, yeah. but then it can also be bad if you fucking get drawn into one where you're a bit outnumbered. And so it's like when you're in a group of lads that can fight, I do think sometimes people look for it. They're like, they won't back down from it. Let's, mm. let's see what. You just, you just strut your stuff like. You just. You, just, when you, you can when tell you have a big when someone's group, got a bit of something. 
about them. Kind yeah. Of when you have a big group and if there's another group and someone does something, you kind of like, oh, let's fucking see who's got bigger sticks than out of us lot. And you just, that's you, how it gets drawn you in, You shouldn't mate. do it, but it's lads, isn't it? Like, mm. and it's what lads so are like. Back to your first question where you said, um, what was the question that you asked about? Can you, well, no, can well, you walk away from yeah, it and all that? So yeah. I think what's what turned my fighting into an issue was, I don't know if you'll have remembered it, when I'm at, the week before I'm at, meant to fight that Kevin Muller or whatever it's called, yeah. pro MMA debut, which I'm glad I didn't do, by the way, because he's a fucking beast. A beast I, went, I went out in Wakey um, to celebrate something with Jack Walton and his missus turned up and like stayed with us. So they were free in, um, what's that new club that opened? Uh, not, it, it was it's not new now, but Cookies, yeah. And we were just in there. Them two were having a dance off in front. And there were a group of lads next to us, which I'd acknowledged, but I didn't, I, they didn't threaten me in any way. I didn't feel feared by any of them because they weren't even talking to me. And I was there like watching these two. Didn't know anybody in there. It's wakey. One of these lads out of this group just turned around and fucking whacked me straight in teeth and knocked me bottom two teeth out. So I started fighting with him on dance floor. Nobody, None of his mates joined in fair, fair play. Like we had a bit of a scrap on dance floor. Got up, went to walk out and... We were walking to get a taxi because my lip were bleeding and this kid comes running out and he's like, he's on his own. He's like, yeah, come on then, let's have it. So I thought, fucking now, I'll get you back here then. So as I'm walking back to him, um, all of his mates come out then and then they're booting off this time. They're not splitting it up. So then I thought, well, I'll take a back seat. So I'm like, what, you fucking, what, you think because there's eight, there's eight of you and there's yeah, me on me. And then as, as I'm doing that, one of them just whacked me from the side, hit me straight on cheekbone and broke my cheekbone and that eye just shut straight away. So I just grabbed the kid I was already fighting with and just started teeing off on him and everyone just teed off on me. Then I took about 20 shots on bounce. D didn't go to the floor, didn't get knocked out, but my face was bust up. So then I find my way into this kebab shop and I'm trying to lock them out of the door and they're all just coming in and fucking stuck my face was just pouring them in blood. So that's my, that's my point there. The fact that if you go out with somebody who's not really got your back, it's a bit of a bad one. Plus now I know that just, just like I can go off the cuff and fucking have a fight with somebody. I'm in the same position. Anybody could just come up to me and whack them. So I don't know what people's intentions are. So on a night out, if somebody, if I feel threatened in any sort of way or I feel like it's going to fucking kick off or this guy wants me, I'm just going to go in there first and just fucking put, put an end to it as fast like, as I can. I'll always just, if I feel threatened, I'll hit him. And, it, and it's, it's a bad, kind of a bad way of thinking, but I'd rather me at them mm. and everyone be like, you're a dick than them at me. Yeah, but and obviously there's all the dangers of fucking hitting someone and they're banging their head and stuff like that. But as you get older, and it's not a good thing, it's a bad thing still because you're still fighting, but as you get a bit wiser with fighting as well. And you know that if I hit someone with just a little bit, it'll just stun them. It'll stop them wanting to fight. Or you, when I was younger, I used to just hit people as hard as I could to try and fucking put them out there. But then when you realize you can do it without hitting them as hard or you can like stop them from hitting the floor or whatever, just give them a little <laughs> cheek, cheeky dink on the chin, mate. And that'll just, sh they won't know what's even gone on. And if they're falling, I'll grab them. And if they're stunned, I'll just go, do you want another one? And then they'll be like, no, nah, actually that's enough for me. <laughs> Time out, time out. <laughs> Back to corners. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully no more fights from now on. Now I'm I'm uh, I'm past it and I can't be asked you're getting in trouble anymore. It's, yeah, it's same with me. Thing. Like no I'm surprised I'm so very surprised you haven't got in trouble over here, to be honest. I am. All my mates say that. Very surprised. But I reckon you must um, see that as a as a, as like a, a positive Yeah, I don't take it for granted. No, I never but take you, it. you do kinda because you still go out and fight and push your but push your luck a little bit. So Yeah, like I, 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 I'd be counting my chickens now. I'd it's be like, nowhere near as much. As it count my chickens or count my eggs? <laughs> I'd definitely be counting chickens <laughs> and eggs. <laughs> it used to be every. Truthfully, it used to be every weekend. Whereas now, like, I think it does when you get a bird as well. You do settle down, don't you? You're not going to kick off when. Don't stop playing that. <laughs> You're not going to kick off when they're there because they're just they find it embarrassing. Like I know that if I booted off and she were there, she'd just be like. Some birds absolutely hate fighting. Like, like my bird says, if I, if if anything ever happened and you got into a fight, I'd just fucking leave. I'd just walk out. I'd like, I'd, I'd hate it. But then some birds, mate, love it. Yeah, they love. Some birds you know like you want you fight. to get into trouble. It's fucking weird. I go bang him. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, like name dropping yeah, and stuff like that. Me, some mate. girls do that. Oh, oh, what about them birds who um who are like? I, I'm using Richard's. I don't know if it's still his missus as, as an example. Yeah. What happened that night with Joe? Yeah, like Richard were fucking about with Joe and then Richard's bird were like saying to Richard, like, she's oh, fucking bang it, like, yeah, like bang Joe and all that. She was saying he's flirting with me and saying all that shit, mate. She, it's like she wanted to, she wanted him to fight. I just stepped in there and said, Richard, get your fucking missus away from me. And now I'm like, I'm gone. But yeah. But some birds are really like that. Uh, should we wrap this up? Yeah, close uh, it off. I'm dying of starvation after that gym session. <laughs> yeah, I'm But uh, give us, um, shoot a bit of a promo with Slamane. So what, what fight we've got coming up? Where's it at? What's, what's so, going on? It's a, it's a big one, this. It's York Hall. In London, and everyone who's anybody has fought your call, really. So for me, it's a big opportunity. Decent opponent. I'm severe. 
It's a base from that. I don't know. So he's obviously not English. Slim acting like he ain't Wikipedia in ten times over. Studied the member. And then um, he's like three and one awesome. It's a decent record, and it's my first time fighting at seventy two. So that's the not the stressful part, but I'm not really thinking about the fight at the minute. What are you weighing now? Eighty one. But my nutrition, I've started with a nut nutritionist called Condition Nutrition, and he works for like UFC guys. So I know that he knows his shit and he's making it enjoyable for me. Like on the weekends, I get to have like burgers, not like takeaway burgers, I have to make them myself. But it's like a bit of a treat in your head when you think, oh, I get to have a burger. Yeah, I, has your knowledge and diet got better now then? I wouldn't say it's gotten a lot better because I, I, he tells me exactly what to eat, but it's more like after this fight, I won't go off the rails as much yeah. again because I'll you know. You want to on yet? Not yet. Mate, not yet. do you know what, do you know what Slim, so this has happened three times. Imagine like, Slim, he's just coming in, just like, fucking well. to the gills, this, this just like, why, bomb. This is why I've asked Slim if his, if his knowledge and stuff, <laughs> if his knowledge of diets got better because this has happened three times now and now I refuse to do it. Do you know, uh, sorry to interrupt, do you know what a carb is? This is what I'm about to so. tell you. <laughs> now go, what is a carb? It's like bread, stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah. Potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, I'm mate. glad you've learned that one because <laughs> it, it'd ring me and go, mate, Go to Asda with me, do a shop. I can't have any cars, but I don't know what the fuck I can eat. So I went there to show him meats, veg, nuts, and all that sort of stuff. Three times I've done it for, for his last three fights. And I'm like, do you not know it yet? And he's like, no, I'll, I'll remember it this time. And then he rings me once and goes, I said, what have you had then if you're not on any carbs? He goes, uh, I've had... Um, Tuna wrap. No, he, he said, I've had so much, <laughs> he, he, like I've had so-and-so bread. And I went, mate, you haven't had bread. And he went, yeah, it's got no carbs in it. I'm like, <laughs> mate, oh, no, it, I can tell you what it worked. Gluten-free bread. Yeah, I've had gluten-free bread. Yeah, that's just gluten-free, it's not carb-free. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. I'm oh, like, right, please right. tell me you're joking. He's like, no, there's a serious amount. There's no carbs. I mean, if you found carb-free bread, mate, I'm going to fucking love you forever. And he's like, give me a minute. You can get keto it. bread, but it tastes like utter dog shit. Yeah, and this tasted pretty nice. Yeah, It, was, it's bread, it didn't really it's affect it. the weight cut, but after that, I was like, right, I can't have that. But that's the thing with this guy. He were telling me, we're like, you don't have to basically, like... I used to pretty much just starve myself on fight week. This is what I used to say to you, though. You, you still need to have five meals. You just have, like, 30 gram of protein in each meal and have, have just some decent fats. Like, as long as you're not having carbs, your body will... Like, I think it's all... I'm picky, though, so I didn't like any of the stuff. Yeah, and I think you feel like if I'm not eating anything, at least I'm not eating carbs as well. Yeah, whereas him, like, he's found... Basically, when you first start with him, you have to tell him exactly what you like, food you like, and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I've done that, so it's... I don't feel like I'm dieting at the same time. I think that's why the weight has come down so much. Yeah, you look considerable, isn't it, mate? You look good. I can see abs in that again, so. But yeah, this this fight could lead to some big things. Like this promotion has got contacts with loads of like big, bigger shows. What promotion is it? Combat Fight Series. But then they're linking up with Hitman Fight Series and doing like Hitman Fight Series roster versus Combat Fight Series. It was kind of like SmackDown versus Raw. I was speaking to Andy House and they were like, yeah, I'll get you on that, but you're fighting for us. But it makes sense because they're from Leeds. Yeah. Combat fights are a down south show. That's the only shit thing for K1 and Ty. All the big shows are down south. Like, there's nothing up here. So all my mates are having to travel to London. Like, you touched on it on your podcast with Tiffin. Like, it's hard getting 30 lads. Yeah. Because they leave it to you to sort as well. It's a big financial ask. Yeah, I get that. That's why I tell them in advance. But like, they leave it to, to you to sort it out. Mm. And it's it, like, I need to focus on the fight. It's a big financial ask, right? But it's not even that because they still end up coming. They still mm. pay the fucking money. But I think in their minds, right, it'll be six weeks, eight weeks out. And you're like, right, boys, here's a cheap cheap tech train ticket. It's going to cost 40 quid return. Hotels are really cheap now. Book them. Tickets are sorted. And then they'll be like, yeah, yeah, sound. Then you just, Don't they around. just won't get back in touch with them two weeks before. Have you sorted it all? No, nothing. Mm. That's well, train tickets have doubled now and hotels have gone up by 50 quid. Like, you need to book them. They'll be like, oh, then nobody can do it again. Then they'll book it fucking five days before it'll be the most expensive then they'll complain about it all night and then they'll be reluctant to come to your next one just because they can't be asked booking yeah. it when you fucking when you want them to but to get the stages i want to get to i need to be doing it shit because it's down south but i need to be fighting on these shows down south mm. that's where all the big promoters are that's where everyone's coming to watch do you have to worry about like like i just touched on a little bit earlier with uh like bkfc and stuff are paying big purses and you're not even having to sell tickets and they're just wanting fights on short notice with k1 are they like you need to sell tickets to do it, or you're not. I'm not going to name the show, but I sold 50, which, in my opinion, is a good amount. And they were like, You've not sold more. I'm not going to ask who it was, but were you going down south for that? Yeah, going down London. So, like, 50 lads coming down from Leeds to London is a big ask. Is it? I sold 50, and I was like, Oh, I always say this, me, right? If you're not paying crazy purses, right? So, let's just say over 10 grand. What's the name on your contract's fighter? The yeah. other name is promoter. So to me, that's their job. Mm. Yeah, you your job shouldn't your up. job shouldn't be 
to pro- to promote and sell tickets. They should have it easy. I just don't get why they haven't got a portal online with a code that you can trust. Yeah. And all you've got to do is push a, a link. You know and trust the organisation that, listen, it's a 50-50 split on tickets or whatever the split is. This is your purse. You just concentrate on bringing your A game on that day. They should so be able to sell it. Don't, they should I be just able don't to make sell. any... I, I just, me, as a sort of wrapping my business brain around it, I just can't... And I'm not saying it's easy. So to me, like, yeah. I've never done it. So, like, I'm, I'm speaking just, just off the top of my head. But the, it's the promote and, promotion and the promoter that should be selling the fight, selling the ticket, selling the fighter... Like just what we do, we we owns it at the minute. It's like it's needed to do that now. Yeah. And these promotions have got to get behind these fighters and making them generate fans and pushing a social presence because that's where it's going. Like it's it's going to take someone. I don't know who will do it. It's going to take a someone will come into the game and change it. It's where I feel BKFC are doing a better job. They just seem to yeah. be pushing the fighters. I think the production's really nice. You can see there's a lot more money in in, in, yeah. in terms of bringing sponsors because when you bring in sponsors, there's more money in the pot. Yeah, so everything should be better than you, you're paying the fighters fairly. You, you've got a better production value. You can, you've gone above access, uh, sorry, excess money to spend on social media and promotion. It, it just builds the beast. But it's all, that's their cost. That's coming out of their pocket a lot of times. So they don't want to do it. Yeah, but that, to, to, you know, grow, to grow a business, you have to speculate to accumulate. There has to be an investment. That's that think that. We think smartly. They don't. They think, oh, I'm losing this much money at this point. Am I going to get that back? And they don't. It's that, and it's greed, and they can't be asked promoting it. Like, so let's say BKFC, for instance, they're investing money in getting it viewed online more than the crowd. Like, yeah, fair enough, sell tickets and fill an arena. That's fair enough. They want to get a global viewing. If you can get a global viewing, it don't. It don't matter how many tickets you sell, as long as you've got twenty good fighters that people are going to tune in to watch. Yeah, agree. It's not about how many tickets these fighters sell. Your pay per view numbers are bringing it in mainly, aren't they? Yeah, but the the only problem with that is you're not getting a fair share of that, are you? No, no. So it's just like... I didn't you, think I got paid you're for you're getting paid on, views for Yeah, you're getting paid on the back end of ticket sales, which I get, you, you know, it's an extra little commission for you boys to, yeah. to take home, but like pay-per-view surely where it's at now and, and getting people in, you in home streaming it. You should get that. Like Combat Fight Series for the pay-per-view, which I think they're doing good, and I'll touch on this next, Hitman Fight Series, what they're doing is you put a specific link in so they know they bought a pay-per-view. Yeah, be yeah, like yeah, an affiliate. Yeah. For yeah. you. And another thing, Combat Fight Series, uh, Hitman Fight Series are doing, they're getting sponsored by Jim King. Fuck me. <laughs> that just reminded me of that. Because Liam, Harris, it's Liam Harrison's promotion and like... Yeah, he's involved with them I quite think, heavily. I, I, think they're gonna do, I think they're going to bring, for K1 and Muay Thai, they are going like, to change the game a bit because Liam's still an active fighter. Andy's done it I've all. told you my idea, mate. Which one? I told you the idea of, of taking maybe 20... Oh, yeah. 10, 15, 20 fighters... Forgetting the crowd, right? Forgetting that. So you can, you know, like the apex in UFC. No, but so during COVID, they yeah. built the built a facility where people could come fight and it was yeah. just streamed and there was still UFC during that time was the only organization to me that was still putting on fights. Yeah. Because they, under, lot, they understood the power of uh social media, digital and, and the pay per view streaming stuff. They were they were yeah. making good money. But my idea was could you take 10, 15 fighters locally, maybe in Yorkshire, Lancashire area? Build a, a fucking sort of following up through content behind that, where it be through the vlogs, podcasting, just build a I big, think it's doable. and then those twenty are just in a pool and fighting maybe every fortnight, every three weeks in, I think in it's cycle definitely like doable. that. <clears throat> someone just got to take the risk, haven't they? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I was gonna say. I think you'd need someone with a deep pocket to start it off and be willing to pay fighters without getting anything yet until they build it up paying like production and and just mm-hmm. have a smart mind on which avenue to take it because obviously you're gonna have to book. Let's say there's 20 fighters, right? Two o'clock today, you're coming and we're going to do your promo and it's going to have an active... Fully e- game fight league. Bro, I'm game. It's fucking I'm sounds fully game good. for that, bro. It, it rolls sounds off the good. Top. And I just... I remember how I got... Like, I have no combat experience. Mm. I, I played rugby and lifted weights. But I remember at university finding the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, it was tape at the time or DVD, yeah. whatever it was. So fucking showing how old I am. And I remember watching that and thinking, fuck me. Well, the one when Forrest Griffin, Diego Sanchez... Um, Stefan Bonner. It Proper was that fight there. at the end when Bonner and uh, Griffin fought. Is that the one where it was basically like a blood? Unbelievable. Yeah, the, where they both got signed. Yeah, with the sign and both. And uh, like that got me hooked. So that got me as a fan. Then I've been a fan of, of, of martial arts then for like 10, 15 years. We've sh- I've shown it sort of somewhat, just testing my own philo- uh, theory out. We've owned it. It's like we've gone from a, st- a static start to seven thousand people seeing his videos. Is that what it is? Yeah, and and all we're really doing there is. Not that I'm not putting time into it. Yeah, he's not. No, what I'm saying is that's like a 
a film on the day and edit on the day job. Yeah. If you had a team behind you or putting weeks into these edits, you could really create something special for these fighters that not only are you going to pay, once you've got, <coughs> once you've got attention and audience, there's going to be money there, but there's also going to be brands for the fighters. So like you, you can pay the purse to them, right? No doubt. They, they haven't got to worry about selling tickets. They just want to be like sort of good on you camera. You want to focus on the fight, don't you? Yeah, but you, I think after a while, you'd get good on camera and you'd be able to sort of sell it or there's whoever's filming it. But then there's going to be that attraction from sponsors because they're going to be like, wow, look how many views these people are getting and yeah. like, look at the... So that attracts in the, the the advertisers and that's when the pot of money grows. Like, look at the UFC, like doing a deal with Prime and you just see it just... Yeah, the target... They must be making so much money doing that. You need to target something that everyone's going to see, don't you? That's why they, they seem to find one person who's got like a good spotlight and just get fully behind I think them. he's done a decent job as Connor Turney. Yeah, he seems to be really growing he's it, come, right? Like Ben, Ben, was it Ben Uncle FC? UK, he's like the face of it, really, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. And he's got his own management now. I just saw that. Yeah, Off it seven percent on purse. Like, he looks decent, though. What? Yeah. The, he owns the company. Or he's got a new manager that does. No, that. he's going to be doing management. Yeah, for Ben Uncle. And he seemed to offer it very fair, didn't he? Yeah, no and, sponsorship percentage. You just take seven percent of whatever purses. you get. Yeah, so and he can negotiate. What does it say? negotiate up to like? It's like 10%, a fee. So if you, if you start making bigger money, so like take a bit of it. I think that it goes it, whatever your percentage rate will good though, won't it? Mm -hmm. And I think having a fighter as your promoter is good. Yeah, but Connor's Connor's it. also shown of how to use social media a little bit. Yeah. Like he's he's heavy on that. He's pushing that, and he's well, making he a name for himself. The only fans for boxing in it. Mm. So he's like that. That's good because he's sh using that to like teach and stuff. He's it? saying it's wrong what he does. I'm saying what Ellis does is fully <laughs> disgusting, and you should be ashamed of yourself. Anne would be disgusted. I'll in pop you. the video of you up on here, buddy. <laughs> the old goblin cock like you've never fucking been fed before. Gobble yeah. gobble. <laughs> <laughs> right on that bombshell, boys. An hour and twenty-three. Right. You're a star, boys. Have a good one, Sam. Bit of everything. Take X back to star. I'll take the star all day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's, singing, he's actually singing his own song to it, ring. He's walking out and singing his own He goes, me and the missus watch X Factor, so we probably saw him on oh. it anyway. I don't remember him, but chances are I watched him. Oh, I didn't think you'd remember me, but I you know. Saggy low jab that's pretty slow. I've seen him throw his backhand a couple of times, and I don't really look dangerous at all. 35 years old. He's only just got call up at the same time as I have. I've been training flat out since then with K1 and stuff, so I've always been pretty fit. He's had a couple of months to get fit. I think he's already passed it. He looks sluggish on his videos. I've, I've, I'm probably sharpest and lightest I've been in a long time. And I've got more machine. Nine. Nine in the place to be. Uh -huh. It's about that time. For us to... Yeah. Yeah. What you know about going out? Head wets, red legs, TVs all up in the head rest. Try and live it up. Rag jewel, bigger truck. Peach all glittered up. Stick of got a stance it right, mate. It's all going on. Huh? So blur all them names out. I guess. I'm trying to smash him. This game on the ground, just smash him, brother. I'm the king. I'm the, I'm the champ. I'm the king. Why you stand on the wall, hand on your book, lighting up drugs, always fighting in the club. I'm the reason they made the dress cold, they figure out what and why when I'm going to do, like interviews, talk, do what's going on, all that stuff. Well, it's just a waiting game now. We, uh, we think the competition so far, mate. What do you mean? I know you, you'd be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it don't mean all, does it? Yeah, been having a lot. Noise. Make sure we're looking. <laughs> Not knowing how you're going to perform, especially when you've been out for so long. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. That warm up, mate, as soon as I get that warm up, I'll be fucking screwed. Bit of chicken in teeth. Bad mouth lobby and then bounce. Like 81 max. So I know in the morning I'm going to wake up under 80 anyway, so. Keep putting some water in. Yeah, but. <laughs> I was like, either play rugby in Castle or you fight, and I can't play rugby. <laughs> fuck home, fuck sleep, come clean, zone. Can't forget that I'm golden, can't forget where I'm going. Fuck popo, police. Enemies, fake homies, can't forget that I'm a OG, better act like you know it. Blunt smoke, smoke weed, cold deep, cough, tell a bitch that I'm awesome, better back the fuck up off. Coco, Celine, Tiffany, she flossy, ain't concerned with who bought it. Weighing in at 82.1, weighing in at 78.5 kilograms. 
I was cooking up another fucking tidal wave. Had to get entitled motherfuckers out the way. Had to take another title, sorry for the wait. Then I went to the main. On. Fashion like my time. Need more hours in the day. I apologize if I'm late. Tap the vein. Whoa. Barely look like I'm awake. Darker shades. Blue of vein. See, I think they've told him 82 kilograms for some reason. Told me 80. So I've struggled to make 80, like I've cut a lot of weight this week, like five kilo. He's he's coming at max you can, 82.5. Obviously in front of cameras, they're like, what do, you, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I'm not going to say fucking go get back in sauna on my own camera, so I just, just don't worry about it. Like my son, you know. I love him, man. I love him. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he got told that oh, I'm fucking making babies. Oh, I'm gonna make them. <laughs> I thought, I thought it was, but then they were, they were like side of his eyes, underneath his eyes. Yeah, they were not yeah, they were dripping into his eyes. Good man. My game plan was to just keep him long all the way through and just keep popping that jab, but he was, once he got caught, I, he was just, I could hear his corner saying overhand and I knew that he was looking for it. I could see him keep stepping back and then uh, I couldn't give me that jab to him constantly on that back foot there, so I just had to feint that, wait for him to commit. Throw a little up there, caught him twice on the Did he, yeah? Good mate, good. Hopefully he'll be back on next show, same one as Holmesy, hopefully mate. Getting another couple of good wins, bro. Sharks out there, trying to take a bite of something. What's hot? A lot of chameleons out there, trying to change up. Anytime something new comes along, everybody wants a bite. Don't happen overnight. So you want to be a rock superstar and live large, big house, five cars, you're in charge, coming up with the world, don't trust nobody, gotta look over your shoulder constantly. I remember the days when I was a young kid growing up, looking in the mirror, dreaming about blowing up the rock crowds, make money, chill with the honey, sign autographs and whatever the people want from me. It's funny how impossible dreams manifest in the games that be coming with it. Nevertheless, you got to go for the gusto, but you don't know about the blood, sweat, and tears, and losing some of your peers, and losing some of yourself too. 